Hi everyone! If you are new to texturing or to the 3D experience in general, you might be getting confused between a bump, a normal and a displacement map. At least I was when I started. They all seem to do sort of the same thing, but that's not quite right, so in this video I will show you how these three techniques work and the difference between them. Before we start, let me please remind you to subscribe to my channel and to like this video. Your support means a lot to me. Going back to our topic, let me open my 3ds Max scene, which is this bedroom, and we will check them on this wall. I have selected a corner wall because these techniques behave differently when you face a surface straight on and when you see it in an angle. I have mentioned it before, but just in case if you are wondering, I usually get my maps from textures.com. I go to the PBR materials and for our example, let's choose a concrete. Let's say this one. Go and download the diffuse map. the normal map and the height map. Open the material editor, create a V-Ray material, assign it to your surface and apply the diffuse map we just downloaded. Enable the Source Edit Material in Viewport so that you can see your texture in the camera's viewport. And if necessary, apply a UVW map. Let's produce a render to see how it looks. This is ok, but it's not realistic, meaning that it doesn't give us the feeling that this texture is three-dimensional. So, let's add a bump map. Open the material editor, right click, go Maps, General, Bitmap and select the height map we downloaded earlier. Produce another render. Can you see the difference? It immediately gives us the feeling that this wall, it has bumps and it doesn't look anymore like a wallpaper as before. How does bump work? Bump creates the illusion of depth on our surface. And how do we understand that this is an illusion and they are not real bumps on our wall? Please check the difference between the back wall and the side wall. On the back wall, we get the feeling that our wall has depth now. But if you see the side wall, nothing really happened there. The surface remained flat as it was before adding the bump map. Bump uses grayscale images and the parts of the image that are bright towards white, they get pulled out of the surface and the parts of the image that are dark towards black, get pushed into the surface and that's how we get the illusion of depth. Unfortunately, the camera angle can reveal this illusion. We can go to the materials parameters, go to the maps rollout and increase the bump value from 30, which is the default value, to let's say 100. You can see that the effect is now stronger on the back wall, but the problem on the side wall still remains. So, I advise you to be careful when you use a bump map, since depending on where your camera and lighting are placed, you might get different results and that will lend to a non-realistic render. Let's now see normal maps. 
go to the material editor and disconnect the bump map. Right click in the material editor, go maps, V-ray, V-ray normal map and connect it to the bump map. Then right click again and go maps, general bitmap, select the normal map we downloaded earlier and connect it to the normal map. Let's produce a render to see how it looks. The result we get is actually pretty similar to the one we got with the bump map. How does a normal map work? Normal is a newer and let's say an improved type of bump. In this method, the bumps we get are not real as well, and the main difference is that a normal map uses RGB information and not grayscale. This makes it harder, at least for me, to create them in Photoshop, so when I don't find this texture online, along with my diffuse map, I prefer to use a bump map, since it's way easier for me to make a grayscale image from the diffuse map. And now, let's see the displacement map. Go to the material editor and disconnect the bump map. Connect the height map we used earlier in bump to the displacement. The displacement effect is usually pretty strong, so I advise you to start with a value of 2 to 5. Let's try 5 and produce a render. So now for the first time you can see the extrusion on both walls and this time the extrusion is real. As its name implies, this type of maps physically displays the surface to which they are applied, so they are actually altering the geometry of the surface. And like a bump map, a displacement map consists of grayscale values. Be careful in displacement not to use high values. Let me try 10 for instance. You can see that the surface starts to get distorted. As I said earlier, I usually play with values between 2 to 5. From my personal experience, I use bump and normal maps when I have a wood surface or fabrics and generally in surfaces where the extrusion is light, while I use displacement maps when the extrusion is stronger, like brick wall, concrete or roof tiles. That's all on this topic for now. I hope that I made it clearer for you how each method works. I will see you all in my next video. Take care till then.